The following broadcast is brought to you by Accelerate Church in Amarillo, Texas. For more information about the church, log on to AccelerateChurch.cc. Welcome to the broadcast. My name is Jeremy File. I'm the pastor at Accelerate Church in Amarillo, Texas, and we want you. We have services every Wednesday, 7 p.m. and Sunday at 10 a.m. We also have all kinds of events happening every Sunday night at 6 p.m. here at the church. But I want to invite you to come visit us at 4400 South Crockett in the beautiful city of Amarillo, Texas. If you can't be here in person, you can always go to our website and stream us live, Accelerate Church. Dot cc that's spelled a c c e l e r a t e accelerate church dot cc here i am in the studio and i have my friends with me the scudders bobby and brett scudder missionaries in uganda and you're here in amarello at the studio thanks for coming down absolutely appreciate you having us we uh, talked yesterday if you missed the broadcast a little bit about your background met in church yep got married 22 years ago plus You started working, serving in the local church, wanted to go to Bible school, but your pastor said, stay here, I'll train you, I'll teach you, and wow, that changed your life, didn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, I learned a lot about submission to authority even in that moment uh, because I could have said, no, I'm going to leave engineering school, I'm just going to go. But uh, but I had to to learn how to trust my pastor and know Mm. that, that God is... God's working through him for me. A lot of people fail to really grasp that that understanding that, you know, as Ephesians chapter 4 tells us that, you know, the pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers are there to perfect the saints, yeah, and, to do the work of the ministry. Yeah, to equip you for that work of the ministry. Me, yeah, and, and I really had to put a lot of trust in my pastor. That's a great point, Brett, because people many times think, Wait a minute, my pastor's trying to hold me back. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. you you guys yeah. were married when you wanted to go to Bible school, right? Yeah. Well, no, we were still dating at that okay, time. Okay, at that time. So it would it, have been easy to think that. It, w- it would have been. My pastor's and, trying to hold me back. And, 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 and <laughs> you know, I would have missed out. Just having said that, I would have if I had just gone off. I mean, it, it seemed like a God thing. But instead of letting my pastor see ahead of me, you know, I, I could have said, no, 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 let me just go and do this. But I, I would have missed out on, on my wife. Wow. And and we would have, you know, I would have thwarted the will of God again, even though it seemed like a God thing. It wasn't what he had for me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so a lot of people rush to think, well, this is this is good. But is that what God really wants for us? So, so let's talk about, Bobby, the process here. You guys are locked in. You're working in the nursery, working in children's ministry, youth pastors mm-hmm. and just blowing and going, doing anything that the pastor needs. Uh, did you think that's what your life would be forever? Um, yes, I, I really felt like that would be a part of it. Um, but we also knew that there would come a time that we would have to, we would be able to ex- expand. But like I was mentioning earlier, never to Africa. <laughs> we always <laughs> thought that we had this, you know, you get your American, we call it the American dream. Well, we had our American um, ministry dream of having an RV and traveling. We were driving down the, the interstate one day and we passed by an RV and my husband said, oh, I want, we're going to have one of those one day and we're going to travel the States. And I was like, really? You want an RV? <laughs> and, but that was, you know, you have your dreams and you have your plans of what you would like ministry to be like. And, but God could take you in a completely different direction. And when God takes you in a different direction, it's always a thousand times better than what you could ever think of yeah even if you can't see the end result right mm-hmm. right you right. just got to learn to trust the lord mm-hmm. yeah. and but, you you guys were talking about this trusting your pastor is trusting the lord absolutely, absolutely. that's what you have to see yeah. absolutely i didn't mean to interrupt you no there, no, no. It, but for us we just knew you just keep serving in your, in your local church mm-hmm. you keep doing what you know to do and then the lord will handle those to get you in the places that you need to be so that's that was really our plan we just keep serving serving our pastor uh, just making sure that he is doing what we can do to help our pastor to even fulfill the call of God on his own life. Yeah. And and when you do that, then the Lord can position you in places that he can get you to where he needs you to be. Yeah. When he sees that it's not all about you. Exactly. But you have your mind, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this man's ministry go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be involved with it. Next thing you know, uh, slowly but surely, let's talk about this process where God revealed to you Africa. And the reason I bring this up, I've been in Christianity a long time. And I remember playing a song way back. I'm talking, this was in the 90s, mid-90s, maybe early 90s, on the contemporary program on the radio. 
There was a guy that sang a song, Please Don't Send Me to Africa. I don't think I have what it takes. And it's like a joke. Y'all, I don't know if you've heard it, but, but uh, that's what he would always say. Please don't send me to Africa. And so I've grown up knowing that song, hearing that song. And then I met you guys. And, I, and immediately I thought of that, probably brought it up the first time we even met. Of, you guys were sent to Africa. Yeah. Talk to us about that. Here you are serving. You're living in middle Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Uh, things are going good. You've got your degrees. You've got good jobs. Mm-hmm. You're serving your pastor. You're working in youth, doing any, anything you need. Yeah, and like, does this just drop out of the sky one day? Africa? I mean, let's talk about that. Yeah, no. It, in order to to tell that, I have to I have to kind of air some of my own dirty laundry. Uh oh. Because uh, brace yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get ready. <laughs> because here, this is going back to trust in my pastor. So my first pastor went to heaven. And uh, so we had a new pastor. You you know him. Yeah, he's pastors, my friend, Pastor Chris, pastor Chris Michael. Michael. Yeah. So we were actually peers at the, uh, even when, when under our first pastor, we were all peers. We were running buddies. We're doing stuff together, being foolish together. You know, just being college kids. Um, and, but now he's my pastor at this time, and so I wow. had to get over him not being my first pastor, and I had a bit of a heart issue with him. Uh, nothing against it. it wasn't his fault at all. He's he's obeying God, but it was it was on my side. And there was a moment, there was a point in time where uh, my heart was against him, and the Lord had to correct me and say, "I cannot use you. Uh, you you're not you're not useful to me right now." How, how did that come about? I'm well, just curious. Well, it was it was you know through some just probably some inward maybe uh friction against pastor chris but it was it was there was a service one night and the lord says uh you know talks to pastor chris and says uh brother brett i need you to come up here got a word from the lord for you i'm like all right you know it's gonna be my it's time for ministry yeah, <laughs> yeah you know and i'm kind of like you know pulling my pants like, yeah, that's good <laughs> you know and uh and the lord spoke to him to me through him he said he said now now scudder you know i'm i'm your friend but I'm also your pastor, and uh, this is what I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying. And he, and he basically said, you know, you can you can choose to do what you want. I've got to be faithful to give you what, what I hear. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord says, I cannot use you right now. You're, you're not useful to me. Wow. Uh, and and he, said, he said, your heart toward your pastor is wrong. And he's talking about himself. And he's talking about himself. And, and wow. it was a hard, it was really a hard position. And I commend my, I commend Pastor Chris for being able to do that because that's not easy, making a transition from being your running buddy, yeah. to now your pastor. And so, you know, a lot of other people in the church they had no problem. They make the switch, but because we were so close, I it took. I, I shouldn't say that, you know, to exonerate myself, but it was just challenging because I knew sure. we knew his, you know, we knew his goofiness and all these other things, but. But the spiritual truth was, he's now anointed to be my pastor, and if mm. if I'm going to obey God, if I'm going to, this church is going to send me out. I've got to submit to His leadership. Wow! So I had to learn that all over again. I'd learned it from my previous pastor, but getting that's it fresh. like back back to yep. the drawing board, and the Lord tells you, I can't use you. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and so that re- that bore witness with you, or did that make oh, you oh, angry? Oh Lord, no, 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 no. I, it I, I, was. Let ahead, me add babe. this. It was so spot on. And when you're getting yeah. corrected, you don't want to agree with it. You right. want to say, no, you're wrong. <laughs> but we knew he was exactly yeah. right because yeah. even there was a PM, it was a night service, mm-hmm. Sunday night service. But even that day, that afternoon, he and I had the same exact conversation. We knew our hearts weren't right. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of aggravation, a lot of frustration there. And we just wanted it settled as well. And so wow. that night when, when that word came to yep. us, there was no denying it. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you, yeah. when you're caught, you're caught and you just need to. Yeah. But that's a, that's a, that's an excellent point because it, there's, there's that moment you just, you just shut up and plead guilty. Amen. And yeah, so instead you, of, instead of trying instead to justify of, yourself. Instead of trying to justify or exonerate yourself. No, I'm good. No. The best thing to, with God is, is God's always right. Amen. And you just shut up and plead guilty. Even if you might have some other thoughts of disagreement, uh, you'll never go wrong submitting and, and honoring and, Come uh, on, that's and, good. And Somebody just, needs to hear that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You, you, it's never wrong. God never will lead yep. you, in other words, against honoring yep. the man of God that yep. he's placed over you. Yep. you. You stop and think about that. Some people think God's leading me when they get offended or disagree with a mm-hmm. word. And a lot of people couldn't handle a word like that. Right, right. You know, yep. I was just preaching you know, the day we we're recording this. I just preached a sermon this morning 
about God is a father and a father corrects. Absolutely. And he says it in his word. You know, yeah. if you will receive correction, I'll receive you as a son. Mm-hmm. The way I hear a lot of people talk, they act like they're sons and daughters of God without any correction yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's going to correct you. Absolutely. So that showed Absolutely. God's love. It, it showed his love, but it was a test. It, it was a test for me as well. You know, what you going to do, Brett? You say you want God. You say you want ministry. Yeah. You know, what are you going to do? And it was the test of familiarity right there. It, it, it was. It was that. It was. It was a lot of a lot of things kind of culminating at one point, and it was a decision time for me. Yeah. And and. You know, I could have run away. We could have said, "Ah, let's find us another church," but but I knew that was I knew in my heart of hearts we knew that's where we're supposed to be. So when you when you went up to hear the word, yeah, you you said you pulled your pants (laughs) up. So what happened after that word? I'm just curious. No, no, no. I I I, it was just I was flattened. I mean, truthfully, I was flattened. uh, But not talking about falling out in the spirit. No, 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 no. No, I walked back to my seat. And I'm and I'm tail tucked. I, I'm I'm tail tucked. I'm kind of arguing with God. I, don't I mean, mean, just to, to laugh be honest, at you. no, no, no. It's no. just I think we all been there. This is a real a time or two. It's a real deal. I mean, it's this is where Christianity, you know, meets the road. It, and it, this is the thing I tell pastors all the time: is you, you know, you, you don't really know what's in you until you get squeezed. Come on. And, and your faith has to be proven. It's it's tried. In fact, there's the you know the Greek word for for test uh, that we see in First Peter and in James is pyrosmos, and and one of the definitions for that is where God tests you. He he tests your faith to see whether or not it's genuine. Mm, that's why we're supposed to count it joy. That's exactly right. That's exactly when our faith right. is tested. Yep. A lot of people yep. can talk faith. Yep. Yep. But when when the test comes, what are you going to do? Yep. That's exactly so. Right. Here, you had an opportunity to be offended. This is where yeah. a lot of people. Oh, yeah. I say this all the time. They think now they're in tune with God. Offense, though, finely tunes your ear into a demon's voice. Mm-hmm. This is what I found out. Yeah, when you're when it. you get your feelings hurt, or something like that, a corrective mm-hmm. word comes forth. All of a sudden, it's like that hurt. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, it's like you hear these demons talking to yeah. you, right? Like yeah. who does he think he is talking that way? Yep. What in the world? You, you've worked with him out in the world. You know? You've know, you run with him all these years. Mm-hmm. Yep. But instead of bolting nope. and claiming it's the Holy Spirit, you stayed put. I, and, and I went home, and, and I talked to God about it. And, and I probably argued with God a bit. And all this is leading up to, to how we actually got into the mission field is uh, you know, I, I argued with God. We, I, I had my Jacob's moment, wrestled with God. Is that why you limp? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm just messing with you. That's just my swagger. (laughs) That's hilarious. But you know, uh, so we we would. I went home and I said, I I mean, I I've wrestled with God and and I said, God, whatever is going on, I have to be useful to you. And it broke my heart. It really did. It broke my heart that God would tell me you're not useful to me. Mm. That because. All I've ever wanted is to be used is by to God. be used by God. Man, hey, we're going to have to stop right yeah. there. Don't forget where you're at in the story. All of our listeners, this is called a cliffhanger. We're like <laughs> stopping right in the middle of the story. I want to hear more about this, but yeah. we're going to have to go today. Tell everyone how they can find out information about your ministry. Amen. You can visit our uh, website. It's www. dot the as in t h e the scudder s c u d d e r family. Dot org. TheScudderFamily.org. Check that out today and pray about supporting these missionaries that live in Uganda. We're going to get to that hopefully on tomorrow's broadcast. Hope you've enjoyed this today. This is the Accelerate Church radio broadcast brought to you by the partners of Accelerate Church in Amarillo, Texas. If you want more information on us, go to check us out online, AccelerateChurch.cc. Be sure and tune in tomorrow, same time, same station right here for the Accelerate Church broadcast. You've been listening to the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. And if you'd like a copy of this message for a loved one or yourself, please give us a call so we can get a copy in your hand. Our phone number is 806-418-8913. We also invite you to download the Accelerate Church app, which is available on your Apple or Android device. You can listen to previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, as well as watch live streaming at the touch of a button. Or if you're in the area and would like to stop by for a service, we would love to have you. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street in Amarillo, Texas. And our service times are Sunday at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We look forward to meeting you very soon.